get ready for that football show with those fantasy guys. Hello and welcome to that football show with those fantasy guys. And we are those fantasy guys. It was a strange week number seven. What will week number eight hold? You'll find out right here. Let's get rolling right away with the injury list. Or key injuries, excuse me. I don't know the name of our own segment. It's only been nine years. Here comes the injury list. Pretty short, but again, dramatic this week. Carson Palmer, Jay Cutler, Leonard Fournette, Jay Ajay, DeMarco Murray, Stephon Diggs, and Mike Wallace. With the exception of Wallace, really important fantasy players on that list, but not a very long list. It's a short list, but I think Leonard Fournette is the is the... The big one there, obviously, the rookie coming in, putting up tremendous numbers, carrying teams right now. And with him being out, you're going to have to stick here to find out where you can find a replacement for him. How about Yeldon coming up in a big spot, right? Maybe maybe it's the old line in Jacksonville. Maybe that could have something to do with it. I think, I think Leonard Fournette has a little to do with it, but the old line is certainly good in Jacksonville. All I know is we've been saying for years, watch out, Jacksonville's on the rise. It took three years, but we nailed that one. <laughs> we'll get there. Our picks aren't always on time, but they're right. All right, let's move on to the hunt for Red October. Finding the ultimate sub. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Jay, teams on a bye this week. There is, I think, six of them. Uh, they are the Cardinals, the Packers, the Jaguars, the Rams, the Giants, and the Titans. And you have a lot to read this week. Uh, the one that jumps out at me is Leonard Fournette because <laughs> <laughs> he's carrying fantasy football teams. Right. Also, Todd Gurley. If you could have got your hands on Leonard Fournette and Todd Gurley, yeah. that would have been the formation of I a know damaging where you're going team. With that. I, I, don't, I don't agree. But that's okay. I still think for uh, Len, uh, Todd Gurley's best days of the season are behind him. You've been saying that for four weeks. He didn't score a touchdown four two weeks, weeks ago. And you know what? He's not going to score a touchdown this week. You're right. There you go. I like being right. All right, let's move on to our picks for the Hunt for Red October last week. Jay, who'd you have? Last week, I had... Taylor Gabriel. Yeah. What the hell are the Atlanta Falcons doing? They are a broken mess. They're a joke of a team. This isn't any other game. This is just like another any other game on our schedule. But we're going to go for it on fourth down. We're going to go for it on a jet sweep from the six-inch line. At least it was to Taylor Gabriel. But anyways, <laughs> uh, I had a bad week. Yeah, no, I hear you. And it happens. It happens to all of us. It happens to the best of us. Um, but... The, the Atlanta Falcons look like an offense in disarray. I mean, they were literally on a historic pace last season, and this season they are not. And I don't know what the problem is because there hasn't been a lot of big changes. Oh, wait, except for the offensive coordinator. Oh, no, history was made this week, though, because for the first time this season, a quarterback didn't throw for 300 yards against the Patriots. <laughs> Good call. <laughs> that is absolutely true. Speaking of 300-yard quarterbacks, Jay, last week I told you to go out and start Blake Bortles, even though I did it with a lot of hesitation because of the matchup. Bortles was 18 of 36 for 330 yards and a touchdown. In standard leagues, he scored as much as Matt Ryan and Phillip Rivers and more than Andy Dalton, Eli Manning, and Marcus Mariota and Cam Newton, who had a horrible day. What can be learned from this? If you have a quarterback playing the Indianapolis Colts, start that quarterback because the Indianapolis Colts are awful and they have allowed a 300 yard passer or multiple touchdowns in every game this season that's what i'm talking about when we talk about a sneaky start jay rebound for a strong this week i'm coming back at you i'm not afraid to play pick wide receivers that have underperformed and i'm going for one right now josh Doxson versus the cowboys this week Ooh, cowboys he, last week. week he had five targets three receptions 39 yards that doesn't even sound like anything that you want in fantasy football <laughs> but at this point he's ahead of terrell Pryor, who they brought in to be their go-to guy he's ahead of him on the depth chart plus he's had Two touchdowns in the last four games. He had another red zone target last week, even though it didn't turn out to be a touchdown. They're looking to this dynamic playmaker. Kirk Cousins has proven to be a pretty good quarterback, and I believe that the point needle is pointing in the right direction for Josh Doxson versus the Cowboys are coming off a big game. So the Redskins are going to have to score points to keep up, and how are they going to do that? With this dynamic playmaker. All right, Jay, this week I got a running back for you because I know there's a lot of teams on a buy-in. There's a guy who is 
out there in most fantasy leagues. I think he's owned in 50% or less of all fantasy leagues. That is Deion Lewis of the New England Patriots, listed as the number three running back on the Patriots' step chart. Lewis is 43 for 227 and two touchdowns. In every game since week four, he has seen more carries come his way for one simple reason, results. Uh, the, over the last three weeks, he's averaged 5.8 yards a game and has scored two touchdowns on the season. The Chargers come into this game allowing 140 yards on the ground per game. They are almost dead last in that court category to go along with five rushing touchdowns. The Patriots should dominate this team after they just shut down the Atlanta Falcons. It's, it's, it's a bad matchup for... Uh, for the Chargers, again, it's your staple, the 1 o'clock game flying across the country. The Patriots should have no problem. That should lead to many rushing attempts for Deion Lewis. I think it all adds up to Lewis going over 100 yards and scoring a touchdown in this game. Go out and grab him if you can. Oh, and one more little nugget. In the last three weeks, he's had nine carries inside the red zone. Deion Lewis is the, is the new starter in New England. That, and I agree. I mean, if you are watching the Patriots games and you cannot see that there has been a predetermined, determined game plan to run the ball more and count on Tom Brady less, probably to uh, to elongate his efficiency Absolutely, this yeah. year. If you don't see that, you're blind. So, I mean, picking a Patriots running back, if you get the right one, that's great. I mean, it's like picking the tallest midget, like I said earlier. <laughs> well, but, that, uh, that is the disclaimer. At any given moment, the Patriots could change their game plan and give – 30 touches to someone else, and, and Deion Lewis get none. Um, but if history is an indicator, that's over gonna the happen. last three weeks, <laughs> that's true. But over the last three weeks, Lewis has proven to be the most productive back on the team, and I believe he's going to get the car carries this week. Let's move on to tough sets. Sit down, Waldo. All right, last week, I told you I'm going for Mr. Inconsistency. Right. Mark Ingram. I've owned this guy in fantasy football multiple times over the past few years, and I've never seen him put 100 yards and a touchdown together in two games in a row. So I thought it was an easy pick. I was wrong. He had 105 carry, uh, yards on 22 carries and a touchdown. Hopefully uh, you didn't listen to me and you started somebody else. But what I'm saying is, if you have him, almost guaranteed to sit him next week because he's not doing it three weeks in a row. Yeah, and I actually agree with that because of the matchup this week. But I think the – the game flow and the team that they were playing allowed the, the New Orleans Saints to run the ball. Um, they, be, without Aaron Rodgers in Green Bay, it's just not the same team. Uh, and they ran the ball a lot, and I think, it, like I said, it gave the opportunity to run the ball. No La excuses. No, I hear you. we gotta, we got to make these picks. Um, last week, uh, I told you to sit Melvin Gordon, who's been an absolute all-star to this point in the season, because of matchup. I told you to sit him. He had... 18 carries for 38 yards. Is it? Is this thing on? Can you hear me? Because I told you to sit Melvin Gordon, and he had 13 <laughs> carries for 38 yards, or 18 carries for 38, whatever. He was awful. And, and it's all about the matchup. If you got a, and again, if you have a running back playing the Denver Broncos defense, sit him down if you can. It's hard to pull the trigger and sit these guys down. But if you did last week with Melvin Gordon and you started someone else, you probably got more fantasy points. Let's move on to this week, Jay. Again, rebound strong. This week I'm coming at you with Matthew Stafford versus the Pittsburgh Steelers. I know Rick has been touting the Bills defense for the past couple of weeks as far as the stats say yes, this and absolutely. the stats say that. Well, I don't need stats to see what the Steelers' defense has been doing for the past couple of weeks. All I need is my two eyes to see they have been lighting people up, and they will continue to light up Matthew Stafford this week. Look anywhere else for an option, because Matthew Stafford is going to have multiple turnovers, and he'll be lucky if he has a touchdown. Yeah, and on, on, a, on an interesting note, we had talked about in the preseason show about the Steelers' defense specifically, and how that I noticed that in the last five games of the season, they were doing nothing but bringing out all-out pressure, and they were the number one defense over that time. They're doing it right into this season, and they're the number one passing defense in the NFL. Because of it, <clears throat> on this matchup, if you can get your hands on the Steelers' defense this oh my week, God, yeah. because the Lions, I, I don't have, again, the stats in front of me. I wish <laughs> I did now. But the Lions are giving up like something like 
four turnovers a game, six sacks a game. So the points are going to be there for the Steelers' defense. I love this pick from you, especially with Golden Tate out and no resemblance of a running game uh, up in Detroit. This week, I'm going to go for blood. I was playing a guy this week who had Amari Cooper on his team, and he hasn't done anything all year. And if he had sat Amari Cooper last week, I would have won two games, but I didn't because of this guy. So now I'm here to tell you that Amari Cooper is not the best wide receiver in the NFL. He's not the best wide receiver in his division. He's not even the best wide receiver on that team. Michael Crabtree is the best wide receiver on that team. He had 19 targets in that game. You could give me 19 <laughs> targets, and I could have produced similar numbers. Not the same numbers. <laughs> similar numbers. Listen, Define similar. I'm deceptively slow, right? That's, that's a great quote from your buddy. I don't know. I heard it from you at All one right. point. You, you credited to one of your friends. But anyways, so uh, last week, obviously, everybody knows. Mari Cooper had a huge day. Um, but this week, like you said, I love stats. This week, they travel from the West Coast to the East Coast at 1 o'clock to Ralph Williams Stadium to play the Buffalo Bills, who have the number two passing defense in the NFL. And guess what? I guarantee you the Buffalo Bills and their secondary saw every second of that game, and they are going to cover Amari Cooper, and they're going to hope that Carr throws him 19 touches, which is not going to happen in this game. Sit down, Amari Cooper. I have a lot more to say about it. That's all that needs to be said. He's not going to get 20, uh, 20 targets, 19, this week. And without those amount of targets, he's nothing but an average, middle-of-the-road, fantasy wide receiver. He had two touchdowns <clears throat> on his first five catches last week. He didn't he, need 19 to get those two touchdowns. Just saying. You can say. All right. We'll see what happens this weekend up in Buffalo because no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills, and they're going to cover Amari Cooper. I, I'll bet he doesn't have more than five catches this week. No touchdowns? I, I, I doubt it. I, well, I, I hope not because I, if you're picking well, them for your – No, yeah. Your no, I, I, would say, I would say no touchdowns and, and under – I would say five to seven catches, and it's going to be minimal yardage. They're going right. to really – they're going to cover him. I, I, I guarantee I would hope it. so. They're, they're going to they're gonna make a, a, a concerted effort to go above and beyond on the coverage. He's going to be doubled on every, every coverage, which could lead to a big game for Michael Crabtree, who is the better wide receiver on that team. Let's move on. My opinion is worth what it costs to Wall Street. All right, Jay, again, favorite segment of the season. I love this because we get to tell you about players that you might not have heard of, that you might not be thinking about, that you have heard of, and uh, some players that you should sell high on, like Todd Gurley when I said it right before his downturn when he didn't score a touchdown. I'll take that as a downturn. So, uh, Jay, you want to go first or you want me to go first? You go first. One? All right, here, here's what I'm going to tell you. Uh, Corey Davis for the Tennessee Titans. The Tennessee Titans are desperate for a playmaker for Marcus Mariota to throw the ball to. How do I know this? Because in weeks one and week two, before he went out with a hamstring injury, he had 13 targets. He was clearly the number one wide receiving threat on that team. And the, the Tennessee Titans have been very careful with their first round rookie and his hamstring. They are on a bye this week, but he will start in week nine, and he will resume his role as the number one receiving target on that team. That is going to open things up for the Tennessee Titans. It's going to open up the run game. It's going to open up the run game for Marcus Mariota, and it's going to open up the, the receiving game for the other wide receivers on the team. They've gotten very, very little uh, from any of their wide receivers, including the tight end. Corey Davis is a difference maker on that team. If you can add him this week and at the very last possible minute next week before he sets foot back on that football field, he could be a difference maker and propel you to a fantasy championship. Corey Davis is a guy that you need to get on your team if he's available in your leagues. And he's available in something like 70% of leagues, which is outrageous to me. I, so. I, I agree with this call. I love it. The wide receiver position, like you said, he opened up everything for that team. It'll allow a little bit more running. They get the dual-headed running attack. I love the pick. I'm going to double down on somebody that we've mentioned the last two weeks. I'm going to talk to you about Juju Smith-Schuster. just fun to say. He's only owned in 21% of leagues at this point in time. If you haven't added Juju yet, go there right now and add him. Because if you don't believe me, 
believe Martavis Bryant. <laughs> Martavis Bryant wants out of Pittsburgh so bad he had a little tummy ache on Monday and didn't show up because he's not getting enough looks. He's not getting enough play. Why is he not getting the looks in the play? Because of Juju. Juju is going in there. He's executing. He scores a touchdown. Absolutely. He has great celebrations. I think that team yeah. camaraderie, camaraderie, yeah. camaraderie yeah, gotcha. might have rubbed Martavis yeah, Bryant was, a little it bit. A, it was definitely a fun touchdown celebration. Oh, yes, I loved it, it was. And the Steelers have said uh, Bryant wants to be traded. The Steelers have said we're not trading him, of but not. we might suspend him. Yeah. So if you haven't uh, picked up Juju yet, th- whether they trade him or suspend him, he is – He's hammering the playing yeah. time. And he's the number two wide receiver against possibly the best wide receiver in the NFL. Right. He's going to see single coverage every single time down the field. And he's taking advantage of it. Absolutely. And the, ever since Ben Roethlisberger questioned whether he lost it or not, the Steelers' offense has been explosive. The way Le'Veon Bell is running the ball 30, 35 times a game, that's going to open everything else up Absolutely. also. And when, when people know you're passing, like you said, they're going to be doubling Antonio Brown. If you haven't got him yet, you're crazy because he is at worst right now in number three or a flex wide receiver and only going to go in the other direction to a number two wide receiver by the time the playoffs come. And that's why we play fantasy football for the playoffs. Absolutely. I can tell you that I have wanted to add him in our league, but I have Antonio Brown, so it's kind of <laughs> like a pointless ad. But I want this guy on my team because he looks that good on the field. It's probably mostly to do with the, the single coverage, but he's also a talented wide receiver. He's a big guy. He's fast. And like you said, with Martavius Bryant complaining, that's not gaining any, any, uh, any favors, points yeah. With, yeah. His, with his teammates or with the coaches. Roethlisberger, even if he's out there, is looking away from him. I think he had one target last week. Yeah. I mean, he would rather not throw to him. Ben Roethlisberger has called the whole Martavius Bryant situation unfortunate. So that tells you everything you need to know. Juju's the the number two wide receiver on that team. He's the guy to own. Let's move on to your wheelhouse, Jay. Weekly leagues. What do you have for us this week to win it big in the weekly leagues and take home some money? Well, uh, as you have mentioned, the Buffalo Bills have a very good passing attack. One of the best. And in case you didn't know, Beast Mode is suspended. So that is going to open up a great opportunity for a value pick Ah. in Jalen Rashard versus the Buffalo Bills with that great pass defense. Could be a great defense. We'll see. But anyways, he's going to be splitting carries, but he is going to get the most carries. He is the more talented back. He's the back they want to be the number one of the split. So the value price that you're going to get him at, you're going to get decent RB2, low-end RB1 results. You might get a touchdown on a screen pass or something down at the goal line. Um, and you can build your team around that at a great price. Yeah, no, I agree 100%. I think that this is a great opportunity to slide in, whether it's a weekly league or a fantasy league. If you need a running back this week, if if you had Fournette or one of the other plethora of running backs that are on a bye this week. Yeah, I don't even know who that is. If you had a, a, one of the plethora of running backs that are on a bye this week, this is a great opportunity to slide in, grab a guy who might get 15, 17 touches, maybe a touchdown. This is this is a great spot to slide in and grab somebody. If you can, of course, there's going to be con- competition for him because everybody knows that Marshawn Lynch is suspended. Jay, smoke. That is all the time we have for this week. We are, we're not doing fantasy question this week. We're taking them live on Facebook. So if you want to go to our Facebook page, it's That Football Show with those fantasy guys. Google search that or uh, not Google, Facebook search That Football Show, That Football Show with those fantasy guys, TFS, fantasy guys, That Football Show, whatever. You'll find us. Look for the shield right there. So shoot us your question. We'll answer it live on Facebook. Until next week, everybody, this has been That Football Show with those fantasy guys. And we are those fantasy guys. See you in week number nine.